In the previous parts of this lesson, we've talked about a lot of the essential concepts that we're going to be using when we're talking about these built-in JavaScript objects. And the first one we're going to be talking about is JavaScript dates. Now these JavaScript dates are a little bit confusing and I'll be honest, I think a lot of developers, even more experienced ones, have a little bit of trouble with certain types of dates in JavaScript. And the reason is because um, writing JavaScript dates is not really um, all about coding skill. You also have to understand how time zones work um, and all of that stuff when you're actually getting into uh, implementing the date objects and stuff like that. Now, I've written a post on this, so um, I'm on my site here, so I'll just scroll down. Um, at some point here, I talked about JavaScript dates. So right here, and with this date post, I really go into detail about all of the different uh, time zones and how we use dates and all of the different nuances of it. So I'd check that out if this is not enough detail for you. But here, we're gonna actually go into the basics of writing dates. And how we do that, uh, I showed it briefly in the last part of this lesson. But all we have to do is define a variable and then assign a new date object or kind of a copy of that template, which is date. And we're gonna assign it and now if we print out to the screen, it's gonna show us a, a date object here and it's going to be the current time because we passed in no parameters or no arguments to that uh, date constructor. Now here's where dates get a little bit confusing. What we have defined here, um, the value that is stored within this date object actually represents the number of milliseconds that have elapsed since midnight on January 1st 1970 UTC time zone. That's a lot to handle in one sentence here. Um, and you might be asking why January 1st, 1970? Well, the answer is not so simple. And again, I would read this post that I wrote to really get a background on that. But basically it's an arbitrary date and time that we are basing all of our future dates off of. And what I mean when I say the value that we're storing within this date is equal to the number of milliseconds, because right here, it sure doesn't look like milliseconds that we're printing. But if you said now, which represents the date that we just defined, and then you say value of, it's going to print the number of milliseconds since January 1st, 1970, and that is the, in the coordinated universal time zone. So if you converted this to years and then days, you would get exactly to this. With dates, there are a variety of things that you can pass into that constructor as an argument to define a date. And what I'm gonna do is just paste a bunch of code onto the screen because we don't need to go through writing all of it. You can pause the video, look through this for a second. I'm gonna walk through it. But again, read that post if you want a ton of information about dates. So the first example, we're passing in um, the, the year, the month, the day, and then the time, or I guess hour, minute, second, millisecond, whatever. And we're passing that in as comma separated uh, arguments to the date constructor. Um, we can also pass in just a string in a variety of different formats, as you can see in this code uh, right here. And then going down, we can um, input a number of milliseconds. So we can just give it the, the value itself or we can pass it in as ISO 8601 format. Um, again, that post talks all about it. And then finally, you can do time zones down here. You can pass in time zones. Um, this last part, the date.now, um, that's kind of an interesting thing that we can talk about here. So, you know, we're used to creating a date by saying new date, but you can also create a date with a static method. That's what this is called here. And you just say date.now represents the same thing as new date. Obviously not anymore because time has elapsed, but it's just giving you the primitive value of that date. Now we're here in this video to talk about some of the instance methods that we can use on a date object, the built-in methods. So let's define a date. So that'll be equal to now, or maybe, maybe instead we'll just say uh, my date because now is sometimes not descriptive because the second you press enter, it's not now any longer. So that's a little bit confusing. So let's create a date here and that's going to represent pretty much you know, 
right now, minus a few seconds. And from this date, we can use a couple of different methods. So one of them will be the two string method. And that's gonna print what we've used here in the console, but of course this is a REPL, so it kind of read, evaluate, print loop, all that kind of good stuff. So we can use this two string method to print out the um, string of the date. And this is actually going to print the value of that date, which is stored in the, uni uh, the coordinated universal time or UTC. And it's going to convert it to our local time zone which is the time zone that our computer has stored on it. So that's actually stored in some file on our computer. I'm not gonna go into that, but um, anyways, here we go for the next method. So we have my date and then we can use the to ISO string. So the ISO string is a specific format and let's scroll down in my post here because we've got it up anyways. And I think I have a little screenshot of the UTC time, or not UTC, but ISO 8601. Um, and let's expand this just a little bit. And you can see this is going to be the format that we're using for the ISO 8601 standard. Pause the video, look at this if you're uh, curious. All right, so let's bring this back and, well, not clear the screen. And then my date, get date is going to give us the actual day of the month. So today is the 16th of January, so we get 16. Um, we can also use my date dot uh, get month, which is a little bit unique because this is going to return the zero, um, or it's gonna return the month of the year, but it's gonna use zero indexing. So instead of January being equal to one, January is equal to zero, which is what we're seeing here since this is being filmed in uh, January. So we'll go to my date dot get full year and that's gonna return 2021. Um, so those are some of the, the basic methods that you can use on a JavaScript date. And honestly, these are probably the most common ones. You won't be looking at anything else for the most part but you can go to the docs JavaScript um, documentation. So again, JavaScript, built-in objects, then you can go down to date, and then you can see all of the different methods that we're using here. Um, something to point out, uh, you'll see this a couple times within the documentation. Uh, if you look at the date.getYear method, it has this little thumbs down icon, which basically means that it's deprecated. And a deprecated method is something that is no longer going to be supported, so you don't wanna use those. Now, if you click on the get year method, you'll notice that in our example, we got we used the get full year method, and the reason is because it says the get year method returns the year and the specified date, blah, 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 and it says it is no longer used and has been replaced by the get full year method. So that's how I knew to go to that get full year method as a replacement. I think that's enough for JavaScript dates for now. Again, this is just a basic overview, not trying to get into a, a ton of the details. You can check that post out that I wrote um, to do that with all the different details. So in the next section, we're gonna be talking about JavaScript regular expressions.